Good day everyone. So for today's lecture, we will discuss first condition of equilibrium. For this topic, we will talk about force acting on a spring. Last time, we identified this as one of the contact forces we will discuss in mechanics. So let's focus first on a spring force or force acting on a spring. Now, for the force acting on the spring, there is formula that we have to use for the force acting on the spring. This is only applicable if we have a spring in which this one, the force acting on a spring is equal to K, which is the spring constant because there are different types of springs that we can use. And S is the displacement in which this is the difference between the rest or unstretched spring and the stretched string or the compressed string. So let's define what is this first. For example, this is the rest. So it means this is the original length of the spring without any force. We call that as your LO or the original length. Now, if we will place some mass here, definitely our spring will be stretched. And that is now the stretch spring. The length of this spring is what we call the L. So it means the final length. And to get the displacement, the change of the length of the string, it's just stretch length minus original length. And that is now the displacement. So therefore, if we will now compute for the force acting on the spring, so this force is how much force is needed to stretch a certain kind of spring with a certain displacement. And that force is this one. So that is that is the force applied by this mass. Now for compressing the length, so it means this is the original. So this is the rest. And we are going to apply a force in this direction. So therefore, our spring is compressed. So the original length is longer compared to the final length. So it means the displacement here is negative. If it's negative, so definitely we have to push this spring. Okay? So that is the force acting on spring. Let's try to solve it uh, in a simple problem. So for example, if a spring has an unstretched length of 0 0.8 meters and the spring's constant is 500 newton meters, so that is the unit of spring constant, uh, how much force is needed to stretch it with the length of 1 meter? Okay, so let's solve. So this is the force acting on the spring or the force needed to stretch the string in this uh, situation. So that is equal to spring constant times displacement. And since displacement is not given, so we have to get the formula for displacement in which that is final length minus original length. And there are given original length is 0.8 meters. The final length is 1 meter. And let's substitute now the given. So that is 500 newton meter times 1 meter minus 0.8 meter. So that is 500 newton meter times 0.2 meters. So cancel out the meters. So what is the force now needed to stretch this spring is 100 newton. So this is how will you use the formula of uh, force acting on spring is equal to K times displacement. Okay, let's try to solve this problem. We have here, so we have three strings again. We have a ring and in that ring, so there are three strings that is attached. So here, this is 600 Newton. Force is given, but the angle, we have to solve that angle. So that is tangent is equal to 4 over 3. So that is roughly 53 degrees. And for T2, we have to find this uh, tension here. So that is T2 and the angle of that is T3. And we have here the tension 3, but in this tension 3, that is equivalent to a force acting on a spring. So our T3 here is also a force acting on a spring. And later on, we need to find what is unknown here. So maybe we need uh, what is the constant or maybe what is the displacement. So it depends to problem. Okay. So first we have to identify what are the forces. So we have T1 for 600 Newton, T2 for the tension that is attached on the right wall and there is a spring that is T3. Okay, so let's try to solve problem. So I will be using my, the short method since I have only three forces here. So therefore I can use the short method which is using the sine law method. So before that, I have to get that theta 
here so in which in the problem so there is a given slope so the, if this is the theta the adjacent is 3 the opposite is 4 and the hypotenuse is 5 so if i will be using the tangent so theta is equal to the arc tangent 4 over 3 so theta is 53.13 degrees using the sine law method so i have to connect this three forces into a head to tail method so i will be having my cartesian plane so this is my x y axis i will be drawing first my t3 on negative x then i have to draw at the end of t3 my t2 so that is 30 degrees coming from positive y and at the end of t2 i will be drawing at the end here t1 so the rule i'm adjusting the length of t1 so that i can close my triangle since this is an equilibrium problem means the resultant force should be equal to zero now the second one is we have to identify the angles so for my t1 this is my alpha for t2 this is my beta and for t3 the opposite of t3 this whole is my gamma so let's get first what is alpha so if you will look this is 90 degrees and we know this is 30 so therefore alpha there is 60 degrees because that is 90 minus 30 so alpha is 60 before we proceed to beta let's solve for gamma here so since we know this is 30 so this is 90 degrees so this is that is a right triangle so this is 90 so definitely this is 60 if this is 60 degrees so in that case this one is 30 degrees and we know that theta is 53.13 degrees so gamma now is 83.13 degrees and since this is a triangle so in a triangle the total angle of this should be 180 degrees so if this is alpha is 60 my gamma is 83.13 therefore beta is 36.87 so that is 180 minus the sum of these two angles so again we will only get alpha beta and gamma by inspection so let's proceed now in solving okay so this is the formula for the sine law in which that is t1 over sine alpha is equal to t2 over sine beta is equal to t3 over sine gamma and since we already know what is t1 so that is 600 newton and we know what is sine alpha so that is 60 degrees we will use this to find t2 and we will also use this to find t3 so let's start with t2 first so that will be t1 over sine alpha is equal to t2 over sine beta since we are looking for t2 it will be t1 sine beta over sine alpha so i will just cross multiply it and substitute the given so that is 600 newton sine 36.87 so that is my beta and sine 60 degrees t2 is 415.69 newton so we already know what is value of t2 now for t3 we will use this formula so t1 over sine alpha is equal to t3 over sine gamma so we have to derive to get t3 so that is t1 sine gamma over sine alpha let's substitute the given so this is 600 newton sine 83.13 degrees so that is gamma over sine 60 so that is 687.85 newton so this is now the value of t3 now the follow-up question on this problem is if the undeformed length of the spring is ac is 0.4 meters and the spring has a stiffness or the spring constant of 300 newton meter what is the stretch length of the spring ac so this is our spring ac we are going to get what is the stretch length of that or the final length which is l okay so that will be our problem so first we will use the formula force on a spring in which that is force is equal to ks but this time we will use t3 for f so that will be t3 is equal to a spring constant times its displacement and since there is a given initial length here and we are looking for the final stretch length so we have to get the equivalent of s so that will be k is equal to final length okay or the stretch length minus the original length and since we're looking for 
uh, L, we have to derive a little bit. Divide both sides by K first. So that is T3 over K. And that will be L minus original length. I have to get the final length. So it will be T3 plus original length is equal to the final length. Let's find the given first. So from our solution previously, we get T3. So that is 687.85 Newton. We know what is a spring constant. That is 300 Newton meter. And the original length is 0 0.4 meters. So let's substitute the given first. So that is L is equal to 687.85 Newton divided by 300 Newton meter, the spring constant, plus 0 0.4 meters. So that is the initial length. So uh, the answer here is 2.29 meters plus 0 0.4. So this is the displacement plus the original length. So the final length now is 2.69 meters. This is how to get the, the stretch length of a spring.